your Bibles, if you would, turn to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. I uh, uh, was reading my uh, uh, Bible this week, and a uh, passage of Scripture jumped out at me, sent me in my brain thinking, went to another passage of Scripture, and it linked up, and I, uh, I want to try to, I'm not sure how it's going to, usually when I put a message together, I have three points. Uh, sometimes I try to alliterate. I don't know how to do that. Uh, I struggle with spelling alliteration, but uh, I try to make some sense of it, put two or three points in there. don't really have two or three points. I have a couple passages of thought, and then, uh, and then we're <coughs> going to be done uh, here tonight. Uh, but I, I really want you to listen. I think I think uh, this, it was a blessing to me uh, as, as the, the thought uh, uh, passed through my mind, and, and God allowed me to think on it this week and, uh, and focus uh, uh, on it. Uh, I want to read, oh, let's, uh, let's see, okay, let's start in verse number one there of Exodus, we'll bounce through this chapter uh, real quick, got a few verses that I'm going to try to read, uh, but, but I want you to now follow me along in your Bibles to, to try to collect and keep track of where we're at, uh, and then we'll bounce to another passage uh, here in just a little bit. The Bible says, verse number one, the Lord said unto Moses, you thee two tables of stone. Like in the first, I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. Uh, I, I time out real quick. Remember when he broke him? You remember why he broke him? Uh, Israel had done wrong. Uh, Moses came down and got mad at them and threw a, a, a holy fit. And he kind of got agitated and had these tables God had uh, hewed out, give to him of the, uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, and uh, and God's pointing out, reminding Moses, he got a little agitated, and he might have carried it too far. Uh, so he, he uh, and God always has a way of reminding us that uh, unless we think poorly of someone else who messes up, we still carry a lot of humanity with us, and we struggle also. Listen, verse number two, and be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man uh, be seen throughout all the mountain, neither let the flocks nor the herds be before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into the Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and, to, uh, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. The Lord ascended in a cloud and stood up, uh, with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, uh, the Lord God, uh, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that, that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the father upon the children and upon the children's children of the third and fourth generation. Verse 8, Moses made haste, bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Uh, and he said, Behold, I will make a covenant before all thy people, and I will, I will do marvels such as not have not been done in all the earth, nor in the, any nation. And all people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Interesting passage of scripture. This is directly after the nation of Israel uh, has sinned. Moses had gone up initially in the, uh, the, into Mount Sinai, taking Joshua with him. We know that because as Moses is descending, Joshua asked, what's the sound of war among the people? Moses said, it's not war, it's the people, it's the sound of music, misbehaving music. Uh, sounded like war to Joshua. Uh, there's a lot that could be gleaned from that. But here God tells Moses, I want you to come to me. Only this time it's going to be different. I'm not going to make stones, uh, the, 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 the Ten Commandments on stones for you. You're going to do it yourself. Uh, you, uh, you kind of threw a fit. You broke what I had made. Uh, so you're going to do the work this time. And you're going to bring it up here. But I don't want you to bring anyone else. God is going to have a long time with Moses. Remember, it's right after Israel had uh, had uh, had sinned when God uh, when when Moses and Joshua came down from Mount Sinai after that first trip up there. Uh, the the people had made Aaron had made uh, a calf of uh, of gold, and the people were worshiping. Uh, 
Uh, they learned the worship of, uh, of a golden calf in Egypt. They carried that with them. They didn't leave it with them. It's mind-boggling. We've been, uh, Brother, uh, Brother George bought a CD uh, where it's a documentary talking about the crossing of the Red Sea and, uh, and its location. And someone's done a bunch of scientific research and uh, geographical research. And uh, it's kind of an intriguing and interesting thing. Uh, and as, as you're, they're going through, these scientists and all are going through this, uh, they're, they're talking about this very time frame uh, in the Bible. And, uh, and there's controversies that's come up. Was it really a Red Sea or was it just a puddle that jumped over? And, uh, and there's, a, there's a discussion going on on this video. Uh, but the, the reality is, and, and one of the, where I left off uh, uh, watching the video, the, the big question seems to be amongst those of uh, the, the researchers that the man's questioning uh, is whether or not a miracle from God is a miracle of God or just nature doing something. Uh, was the cloud that followed the nation or led the nation of Israel, was it from a volcano? Uh, that was uh, that was up and out smoke, and the trumpet they sounded that sounded was it uh, uh, as the air or, or the hot air under the earth uh, broke through and, and came through small crevices in the mountain, and and uh, they're they're in other words are trying to explain away a godly operation that God is bigger than nature, and in all honesty, God is bigger than nature. Uh, and let me just say this, and, and, and this is going to get a little political, and uh, I, I hope I don't offend too many, but if I do, uh, you need to think right about this. Uh, man is not big enough to destroy nature because God's in control of nature. Therefore, this climate change thing that man's supposed to be responsible for, that we're uh, on a large scale destroying the, uh, the environment, uh, the environmentalist mindset is bogus. Uh, let me say that again. The environmentalist mindset is bogus. You and I cannot change the environment. Our science, you go back and look at, we, we maybe have recorded temperatures and weather conditions for about 100, maybe 150 years. When, when Nashville had a big flood a few years back, they called it the thousand year flood. Nobody knows. Because nobody's been here a thousand years, and no one's recorded it for a thousand years. Certainly not in Nashville. So nobody knows, so it's just a, a number that scientists try to throw onto something they know nothing about. So for us to think that we're powerful enough to hurt something God doesn't want us to hurt is, is us thinking that we're pretty something, you know, we're pretty amazing. Human beings are pretty amazing. As I read the Bible, you know what I find out about humanity? God created us. And we are superior to God. And we don't have the power that uh, oftentimes some might think that we have. And, uh, and they're trying to find a way to, uh, to regulate us in, in, a, in a bogus fashion. You say, well, Brother Dusty, have there not been uh, uh, areas that, that, uh, that uh, lumber companies have come in and destroyed? Sure there have. When the lumber companies got big and figured they were going to build big cities, they went and tore up a bunch of uh, uh, the, uh, the trees and stuff. And certainly they did. They did pillage the, the, the ground to some degree until it dawned on them that there were more people coming on earth and they needed to have a way to replenish what it was they were taking apart. And so they went back and they cleaned those areas up and replanted trees. And honestly, I went to uh, uh, Louisville Slugger uh, a few uh, about a year ago. And you know what? The Louisville Slugger, they, they harvest trees all the time. They make baseball bats for the major leagues to break bats all the time. And uh, so it's a constant process. But they go through and they have these areas that they own. And they go up there and they pick and choose which trees are the good trees use those, the bad trees they cut down, they remove any rubble so that there's no chance of a big fire in that area, and they are actually made of crop out of the uh, out of trees. And and those people, and it's sure that some people, some uh, lumber, uh, lumber mills have taken advantage of the situation, but most of them figured out pretty quick they're killing their own industry. And, uh, and uh, so they have to uh, think this thing through. And that's what we see happening over and over again in industry. So I got carried away with something I didn't want to. But uh, God is bigger than we think he is. And here we have an incident where God, Moses, is walking up into the mountain. God is talking to them. It's right after Israel has sinned. And Moses goes to God. 
And right away, what's he say? This people that are with the stiff, stiff neck. And he says there in verse 9, he says, Pardon our iniquity and our sin and take it for it thine inheritance. What a man. What a leader Moses was. His first statement to God was, we're sorry. We messed up. Please forgive us. God said that he would and made a covenant with him. Down in verse number 27, the Bible says, The Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, uh, for after the tenor of these words have I made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither did eat bread nor drink water. He wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Time out real quick. Uh, I know that there has been talk. There's books written. There are people that do this. I know uh, of a couple of preachers that every year uh, they've uh, traced it back. And, and they think that they found the 40 days that Moses didn't eat or drink. So he's on a 40-day fast. And uh, they think that makes them more godly. Let me just time out. It doesn't hurt anyone uh, to fast. And it's a good thing. It's a healthy thing. But honestly, I think in this story there's so much more we can learn from uh, than that 40-day fast. That's what I want to focus on tonight because I think Moses gleaned much more than just a 40-day fast. For if you see after that 40-day uh, fast, you'll find in verse 29, it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with, uh, with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And if you read the passage uh, following that, you'll find that they actually put a veil over his face because his face shone. There was a visible, a, a, a vis you say it glowed? It glowed. Why? Because he had been with God. He had been with God. I noticed that statement there, Moses wist not. Now, Moses, what did he wish not? Did he wish not? That word wish means he didn't know. Did, did, what, what didn't he know? Uh, he knew he'd been with God. He knew he had talked to God. What he didn't wish is he didn't know that he had a, a, an effect of being with God. The effect of being with God was so great that it uh, uh, affected those around him. People around him said, man, you're, you're blinding us because your face is little. Could you imagine that? But the mind-boggling thing is Moses didn't know it. Why? Because Moses had been in the very presence of God himself, had been with true light, and had seen God, and God gave him physical power, a supernatural, let me just throw that in, physical power, to where he didn't know and he wasn't blinded by the light, uh, that he saw, and the effect that it had on him, he glowed. You say, well, that's weird. Yeah, it sure is weird, but everyone knew he'd been with God, didn't they? Yeah. I thought of those words that Moses wist not. Moses didn't know. And right away, that terminology triggered a little thought in my mind, and I looked over, if you look, take your Bibles, and look over in Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16. Took, look in your Bibles there. In verse number 15 of Judges chapter 16, the Bible says, And she said unto him, hast thou, or, or, has, or, has, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. We're talking about Samson here. In verse 16, And it came to pass when she pressed him, the sheep being Delilah, when she pressed him daily with her words, and argued him, uh, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart. And said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I will become, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that she had, he had told her all his heart, she said, and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come upon, uh, come up this once. For he hath showed me all his heart, that the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought money and laid in her hand, in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. Notice verse 20. And she said, uh, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. But Samson awoke out of his sleep and said, I will, I will go out as another time. And shake myself. 
And notice this last phrase here, and he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. He didn't know God was no longer with him. You say God gave him strength because of his hair. No, God gave him strength because Samson had dedicated himself to the Lord. And to the degree that Samson dedicated himself to the Lord, God used it. Now, Samson's one of the most puzzling uh, prophets in the Bible. One of the most puzzling uh, judges, I guess, a better word than prophet, uh, for Samson. Uh, Samson struggled with doing right. Samson struggled with doing things how he's supposed to. It's interesting, though. God used his misbehavior uh, as, a, as a method to afflict or torture the, uh, the Philistines. And, and God used that. But what's frustrating to me as I read this passage of Scripture, you have two instances where two men of God, used by God, in powerful ways, wist not something. They didn't know something was up. Moses did not know that his face glowed enough to where he was annoying people. Samson didn't know his strength was gone. Moses didn't realize that being with God had such an effect upon him physically that it affected the, those around about him. Samson had no idea that the power of God had been stripped away from him because he wasn't connected with God like he was supposed to be. Do you not see an issue here? I think, and that what's concerned me as this COVID thing has, has ravished our, our nation and, and, and honestly has hurt and hindered the work of the Lord, in my opinion, in many areas. We now are afraid to come to church. We'll go to other places, but not the church house. You say, what's wrong with that? God wants us to come to church, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. Well, shouldn't we be safe? Yes, we should be safe. So what should we do? I don't know. I really don't. I don't have a great answer for you. But what I, what I am going to say is during this time where we're having to hunker down, during this time where we have to be uh, in, in our homes and in some cases have to be away from what we're supposed to be away from, my fear is that we're going to be like Samson and we're not going to know God's not with us because when we're having church here, we're putting on Facebook and we do everything else that comes in our mind at the house and we're not focused on God. And my challenge to each one of us as we go through this time period where everything is in our people and everything's unknown and there's all this fear and, and, and concern around about us, don't let ourselves fall prey like Samson did. I mean, we're going through the motions, we're turning the Facebook on, we're even putting on big TV. But we're scouring here, scouring there. We're not linking up with, with the service to the best of our ability. We're doing whatever. We'll put this, uh, the, 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 the Brother Dusty's up on the screen talking, and, and but we don't know what he's saying because we're off cooking a meal. We're off doing our thing. You say, Brother Dusty, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is not that you're missing out the wisdom of Brother Dusty because I'm having none. What you're missing out on is time with God. And if you're trapped in the house, and many of us have been, and honestly, I think in just short time, many of us will be. But when that time's happened, when it's time for church, let's have church. Well, I can't come to the church house, have church at home. How do I do that? Assemble the best way you can. Because what I think has happened, and we're going to see here in the next little while when a vaccine really comes, we're going to see a rash of Christians not going back to church because, well, we can get it home. Brother Sam's almost perfected. We are to get the sounds right, the picture right. And in time, he's going to have it hone in on me. And uh, and maybe in time, he'll get little miles up there. And he'll be controlling the camera. And it'll go with me when I wander here. And you can get a tight view. And you can watch my eyeballs bug when I'm hollering and screaming. And, uh, and you can get a good view. And it's almost like being right there. I mean, it's almost like they say that football games. Football games before COVID were struggling getting to get the fans in the seats. Why? Because the televisions have gotten so good. The picture has gotten so good. The experience at home. You could experience the football game sitting in your living room. Why not do it? And I have the climate control instead of sitting out there in the rain and the snow and the weather. Uh, you could sit at home and get it. Well, now it's happened to church. And my fear is if we're going to walk away from God, we're going to end up like Sam, uh, Samson. And we're not even going to know it. And so it's important for me as a preacher to do my part to say, hey, let's, if we're not going to know something, let's know like Moses that we're glowing. 
I'd rather we not know that we're glowing because we've been in the presence of God than be over here with Samson and wish not that God's strength is drawn. Yeah. My connection with God is now gone because I, well, you know, I, I've got other stuff to do. You know, most of us have been Christians long enough. We know what backsliding is. What's backsliding? It's not being a wicked, vile, sinful reprobate, is it? It's just really backsliding. This is not doing, not growing in the Lord. That's what being backslidden is. Stagnating. What does God say about that lukewarm church? I'd rather you were hot or cold. But lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. I don't want nothing to do with you. And the reality is that many times in our Christian life, we're going to, we're, we've got to be careful, y'all. That's what I'm saying. I'm not pinpointing any one person. I'm not saying this person is doing it. I don't know what's going on in your heart. I never know what's going on in your heart. But what I can say is based on what I've learned from God's word and what I've learned from working with people, if we're not careful, what's going to happen is God's church is going to fall apart because of a little bug we can't see. Yeah. And fear. I don't want that to happen. And so, with my little abilities, what I've gotten as far as presenting a message, I want to tell you, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to wish not like Moses and not wish not like Samson. Moses didn't know that his face was glowing. He didn't know that he, God was, in essence, oozing out of him to others to where it was annoying, where they were covering him up with a sheet. As opposed to uh, uh, Samson, and if you read that story, most of us know what happened. Uh, he wished not that God's power was there. The Philistine army absorbed him, drug him off, tied him up, poked out his eyeballs, made him useless, uh, they thought, in the work of the Lord. And if it weren't for God's grace, he would have been useless. But he died a martyr's death, and in, tr in truth, he took a lot of Philistines with him. But I just wonder how much that Samson could have done if he'd have been like Moses and wished not that God was with him because he'd been up close to God. You just wonder if in his death he killed more people than he did when he was alive, more of the enemies of the Lord and his people. Imagine what he could have done if he'd have sold out to God and stayed sold out to God all throughout. Truth is that we don't have much time here on this earth. I got thinking about it. I'm 51. I'll be 52 in January. I'm getting old. Every time I look in the mirror, there's some other evidence of getting old. Every time I get out of the bed, there's another evidence of getting old. I helped my uh, in-laws move this week. And evidence over and over and over again of getting old. Just a few minutes ago, I was sitting in that office uh, trying to get the papers sent out, printed out for our Christmas songs tonight. I scooted over on the desk. I cracked right on the corner of the desk, right on this kneecap. It shuddered throughout my whole being because about a year and a half, two years ago, or whatever it was, I broke that kneecap. And it hurts. I'm telling you, hurts. Don't, don't ever break your kneecap, number one. If you happen to break your kneecap, don't ever bonk your kneecap on anything. It hurts really, really bad. And, uh, and, and But over and over again, I have these evidences of my age. I, I, was, I was helping uh, Joe when, uh, when he was here with the girls. And, uh, and we were ch checked the oil, and I pulled the dipstick out of the oil of Nettie's car, and I checked the oil, and I went to put it back in the dipstick. And you know what happened? Somebody grabbed hold of that, that, that car and wiggled it like this. Because here I'm trying to find this hole, and now all of a sudden my hand's going like this as I'm trying to find the stupid hole. I'm 50, y'all. I shouldn't have had that squiver thing going on. Where'd that come from? I grabbed my hand with my other hand, and I lined it up real good, and I put it right in there, and then I looked over at Joe. And I said, dude, there are evidences of getting old. That's one of them. <laughs> Things that used to be steady. Uh, Brother Andy said something like the other day when I had cut a, a line on that. Man, you got steady hands. Not when I'm putting the dipstick back in the oil. I, not, not, I don't there. Uh, maybe holding that machine, but not the other. The truth is, we're getting old. We don't have much time left here. If God gives me to 70, which is three score year and ten, correct? I, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I don't have much time left to influence. I don't have much time to do work for the Lord. And honestly, if we're not careful, 
during this time of question mark in our society and in our world today. We will dwindle and wander away from the area Moses was in, where he just had a close, connected conversation with God. And he didn't know the effect of that conversation was uh, and did have an effect on everyone around him. And yet you have a man over here that had the power of God on him. And had it stripped away just because he did everything he wanted to do. And he didn't want to walk the way God wanted him to walk. And he slipped off. And he didn't even know God's presence wasn't there. I wonder if we could go back and question Moses. If we could have an interview with Moses and sit him down. So Moses, what was it like when you came down and, and, and you're talking to people and they're covering your face because of the veil? Uh, what was that like? And he, I don't know. I, I don't know what they were seeing. He said, I, I just remember I had been with God and I never felt such a wonderful feeling in all my life. And I never knew that you could get that kind of relationship with God. And man, I was just so great, excited and happy and, and glorifying God in my heart. And, and I guess my skin showed it. I don't know. And then you go and interview Samson as he's being carted into being paraded in front of all the Philistines. And being tied up and mocked in front of them as they mistreated and abused him. Right there. And we interviewed him. Jason, what happened? I, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, was, I, I thought it was good. And every time I went to move the gates of the city, I just picked them up moving. I, I, I needed to kill some Philistines. They were irritating uh, God, they irritated me, and I grabbed the, the uh, donkey's jawbone and I killed thousands of people with the donkey's jawbone. And I, I don't know what happened, but uh, I, let, I let something slip. And one thing led to another and another. Lo and behold, I, I'm laying on Delilah's lap. She said, the Philistines are upon me. I got up as another time, went to defeat him. I didn't even know God's presence was there. And if you read Samson's prayer at the end of his life, he basically says, God, I messed up. I wish I wouldn't have, but I messed up. If you'll give me the strength this one last time, I'll try to do work for you. It's the last work I'm going to get to do. I'm only living about a third of the life that Moses lived, but I'm going to try to serve this last few moments for you. I didn't know you were there, Lord God. I didn't know. I lost track. Oh, my friends, tonight, let me remind you. Let's be careful of what we let slip in. Let's be careful during this COVID era not to let everything slip. How am I going to do that, Brother Dusty? Read your Bible. If you read your Bible before COVID came, read it now. In fact, let me encourage you. Facebook people, listen up. You need this. You need this. This may be all you hear, and I want you to hear it good and clear from a preacher that cares and has a heart for you. I want you to hear it. Read your Bible more now than you ever have before. Increase your Bible reading. Pray more. Uh, Lord, get more into the Word of God. Get rid of the worldly music. Focus on God. Keep your mind on the things of God because my fear is that if you get away from church, you get away from that weekly reminder, i got to keep God as part of my life. You're not even going to know when the thoughts and the devil and the world has slipped in and caused you to lose touch with God. And those of you that are here tonight, let me encourage all of us, myself included, it's not going to get lax. This isn't the time for Christians to get lax, stand back, get frustrated. I listened yesterday. Some may have been with the problem with this. I don't care. I listened yesterday to the president in his meeting down in Georgia. I've heard President Trump, many of his speeches, I've heard him honestly, he's not the greatest speech writer. He's not. He's not the best at, at, at motivating. He's not. He's just not. He's fun. He's fun to listen to. He's sarcastic. I like that. I listen to him. I listened right to the end of the speech and listened to all, and it was long. But he got to the last few minutes, and I encourage the folk in Sunday school this morning. I encourage you, those of you on Facebook, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go out and find that video of him making that speech. If you fast forward it to just after the two, the two, the candidate for Senate uh, speak to him. 
or speak, uh, 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 he lets them speak for a moment. And as they, as they get out of the way, and he goes over to the podium, he begins talking. And I was sitting there, I was driving in the car, and my wife was, was talking to me, but honestly, I didn't hear much of what she said. Because I locked in on what the man was saying, and the man was saying the stuff we haven't heard. And he was saying, I'm not giving up. I'm doing what's right, and I believe in my heart. I'm doing what's right for America, what's right before God, and what's right before American people. And I'm going to fight all the way to the end. We haven't heard that stuff. Y'all, we haven't heard that stuff. And I'm sitting there listening. Tears are flowing out of my face as I'm listening to someone that's so dedicated in the job that he's been put here to do. He's convinced that God has put him here to do something. And he even says it. And he makes the statement that in God we trust is what America was founded on and ought to be continued to be built on. He said that. My friends, I sat there and listened to the guy. He said, hey, folks, it's time for us to vote. Yeah, that may have been fraud, but don't lose sight. we got to keep on going. we got to keep on working. we got to keep on doing what's right. And my friends, tonight, I want to remind you as Christians, we got to keep on going. we got to keep on fighting. we got to keep on doing what's right because the world is watching us. If ever they watched Christians before, it's now. And it's high time we quit being all frustrated and scared of our own shadow. Yeah. And realize we're trusting in the God that made COVID. Yeah, he made COVID. Nothing gets past him. He wasn't shocked with what happened in China. Not one bit. We were. God knows what he's doing. I don't understand what he's doing. You may not understand what he's doing. But we got to trust that he knows what he's doing. And my friend, this is the time I'm afraid Christianity has taken a back seat and we need to be right in the front. Say, when the problems of life happen, where do I go? I go to God. Listen, tonight, I just want to remind you, keep going to God. Don't end up like Samson. I want us to be like Moses. <laughs> what don't you know? I don't know. The glory of God might be oozing off of me. I hope it is. I'm trying to get my Bible more. I'm trying to read more. I'm trying to pray more. I'm trying to stay closer to God. If we're not careful, we'll end up over here with Samson. I'm not real sure how it happened, but I kind of just got away from God. I got so far away from God, I didn't even know that he wasn't there. Our Heavenly Father. And I didn't really have any points. Just the thought. Lord, my fear is that we as Christians, as your people, are allowing ourselves to get so beat up that we're becoming, if we're not careful, more like Samson than like Moses. Lord, a message like this that you brought to my heart should do more to fire us up to be like Moses. Huh. Old man Moses. 80-something-year-old guy climbing a mountain twice to get a message from God. And the second time, he had to carry the stones by himself. Because he had thrown a fit and thrown the rocks down earlier. But Lord, when he came back, Lord, the glow of being with God was all over his face. And he didn't even know it. Lord, help us to be like Moses. Help us to be cautious. We don't want to be like Samson. God, my prayer is that you'll ignite a fire in each one of our hearts as your people, your Christian people. And Lord, may we continue to go forward for you. Continue to get closer to you. Continue to increase our Bible reading and prayer time for you. We've got to stay in touch with you. And not let this COVID or anything else get us away from you. Please speak to our hearts, I pray. Amen.